uh, it's huge that we talk about this a little bit today. We didn't talk about it, obviously, on, on Easter Sunday. This is uh, uh, the theme of the conference to, uh, uh, to don't look back. And so I want to look at some things. Uh, I want to look at some things this afternoon that will give you some uh, ammunition uh, in, in, how to, uh, uh, in how to deal with things. You know, uh, when Jesus was in the wilderness, uh, obviously uh, the enemy uh, uh, threw some things at him that were absolutely accurate. Uh, Jesus uh, had no defense against the enemy except what he used for the defense that was necessary, and that was the Word of God. Every time the enemy uh, uh, told him something uh, that he would do for him, uh, even though uh, it had been deposited in his hands by the high treason committed by Adam and Eve, the Lord Jesus knew what to do. He said, it is written. And you and I have that same opportunity. But I want to be sure that you remember that toward the end of that story, the Bible said that Satan left him for a season, which means uh, the enemy in this life uh, is going to be relentless. He is not going to let your past remain in your past if he can do anything about it. He's going to be sure that one of your relatives, one of your friends, one of your exes, somebody is going to throw something up in your face that had to do with your past. But the thing about it is you do not have to suffer from what was when you now have an opportunity to succeed because of who was. And he is the one who set you up for success and victory. We're going to look at some things that the Lord Jesus had to say. We're going to look at some things that Paul had to say. We're going to look at some things from all the way back in the book of, uh, of Genesis that, tra- that transpired that will make it clear to you not to look Hallelujah. back. Hallelujah. Don't look back. I want you to get this because it's, it's obvious. We've got about six or seven references that we're going to use. We're going to begin in Luke chapter 9, verses 61 and 62. Uh, this is Jesus speaking. And, an, and, and another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go bid them farewell, where it's at, where, which are at my home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man, now that includes you, male or female, in this room. He said, no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. No man putting his hand to the plow, making a decision, let's say. No man making a decision to follow after the things of God that looks back is fit or suitable to be able to operate in God's system, which is the kingdom of God. No man looking back, obviously using the, uh, the, 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 the picture of a farmer, uh, you know, back in the day when, when they had a plow, you know, that, that curved thing, you, most of you don't know it, but you, you're not old enough, but it was a curved thing called a plow, it had two big handles back here, and up front they had a couple of oxen or, or cattle or whatever uh, with a, uh, with a uh, deal around their head, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what you call it? Yeah, they got that. I was not one of those guys. But what happens is when you use that to farm with, or to or to plow the field, then if you look back, that thing's going to go all over the place. Right. That's right. And 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 if you come the other way and keep looking back, it's going to go all yeah. over the place. And you know that's what happens. Right. And that's why Jesus said that. Mm-hmm. If. If, if, you, if you put your hand to the plow, if you make a decision to follow after him and you keep looking back, right. listen to this very simple statement, you're going to be all over the place. That's right. And you know, that's where most Christians are, yeah. all over the place. Yeah. They'll hear a little bit here, a little bit there, and that'll sound good there. This tickles their fancy here, so they'll go here, they'll listen to here. No, you got to keep your eyes right. on him. Yeah. you got to keep your eyes on the truth. You got to follow those who through faith and patience are inheriting the promises. So he said, no man, just be sure you realize that you can't pull it off because he said, no man could pull it off. You can't look back. We then see in Luke 9, 59 through 60, a couple of verses prior to that. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, he said, listen, allow me, um, which, you know, anybody that reads the King James, uh, you know, you ought to be sure anytime you, uh, you see the word suffer, that doesn't mean suffer. Doesn't mean suffer physically or, or any other way. Uh, it, it normally means just uh, uh, allow. 
or make an opportunity for. And he said to them to follow me, but he said, Lord, allow me first to go bury my father. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Does to me. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Let me just say something to you. I'll just take a moment. I took too much time in the first two services, but let me just make it very clear to you right here. He is a God of the living. If they died in him, he's still their God. But he's interested in him, in, in him being your God so that he can cause your life to be more to the people you influence than just being in attendance at somebody's funeral. Not being ugly. He's making a tremendous point here. He wasn't saying offend people on purpose. huh? Don't show up at a loved one's funeral. But he's saying, this is how important it is that you focus on what the kingdom has for you and what I want the kingdom to do through you. Looking back produces questions, regrets, and no kingdom life. You know, how many times, you know, that's another thing about funerals, honestly. Uh, funerals, they just, uh, they just evoke all kinds of memories normally, don't they? And none of them healthy. Right. Say, well, I just remember the good times. Really? Well, what are you going to do with those? What are you going to do with those good times? Huh? You, you can't, you can't, you can't relive them. I mean, you can let them take up space in your mind. You're blessed. You can't, you can't let them take up space in your mind because pretty soon they'll go in different directions. Amen. So you've got you've to not, not look back. You've got to realize that you'll have questions. Things will come up. You'll have regrets. We, we put down a, a quick definition for regret here, which it will create sorrow, guilt, and shame. Well, we know Jesus paid for those. Why would we want to rethink about something he's already... He's already taken care of, glory to God. Right. He's, already, he's already borne our sorrow. He's already borne our shame and our guilt. Hallelujah. We don't have to carry that. You know, men and women, young men and women, are put in positions to, to deal with things that they weren't wired to deal with. That's why we need to make a decision as we mature in the things of God that we're not gonna, we're not gonna allow the past to last. Because that's what you do. If you keep looking back, you allow the past to last. Right. And I know all of us have, have had some things. And, and, and many of us have perpetrated things on other people that, that the enemy will try and bring up and try and, you know, convince us uh, what, you know, bad people we are. We were. But we're not anymore. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And you got to remind the enemy, listen, I've got a plan for you that the Lord has already revealed, that you're going you're gonna to be separated from him forever, right. and, and you could have been leading praise and worship forever. Right. But right. because you were pridefully desirous of uh, exalting yourself above him, then uh, you got booted out. Yeah. Well, that's not happened to me. I've received him. I've humbled myself. I'm going to remain humble. I'm going to remain teachable, and I'm going to grow, and I'm going to flourish, and I'm going to... Put a, put, a, put a demand on your camp that things begin to change as it pertains to people that I still have an influence over. Luke 9, 23, a familiar verse. And he said unto them all, there was a whole group of people, whole group, not just his close disciples, but a whole group of people. And he said, if any man will come after me, any man, again, we've got anyone, huh? Yeah. Any man yeah. come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, you know, you have, to have the, you have to have the right understanding of this because God's, God's not asking you to die for him. Right. He died for you. Right. You know, there are gods that are worshiped today yeah. who, who, wants, who wants his people to die for them. But, but God died for us so we could live for him, so that we could live. Hey, what kind of sacrifice could it be to live for a God that died for you? Do you think he's gonna whip up on you when he's already whipped up on his son? He's already done everything heinous on his son so you and I could live above all of those things in this life. You can't look back at the things you were because you're not him or her anymore. You are not that person. You know, it's hard for you to look back at yourself and, and not realize that your 
you're gone and you're new. But the truth is, that's exactly the way it is. And that's why the hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and continuing to hear the Word of God begins to change your program. You begin to understand, listen, I am a new creation. I know the verse. I've got it memorized. But I'm a new creation. That was not me anymore. And I can't do anything to fix that. He fixed it for me. Now, many people have said, well, you know, I, you know, I wish I could get a hold of so-and-so. Well, listen, if there's so-and-so in your heart that you had an issue with or there was a problem with, you know, if you can find out where they are, send them a note. Mm -hmm. Just send them a note. Mm -hmm. Tell them, you know, the Father has changed my life. I don't know where you are right now, but I'm just asking you, please forgive me for what I did or what I said. I mean, if that's good for you, then do something like right. that. But if you don't know where they are, and honestly, you're really not interested to even send them a card, then just be sure you release yourself from anything that you have done. Because listen, no matter what an individual has done, they will not be the reason that a person can't or won't receive the Lord Jesus for themselves. Right. Let me say it this way. Your blood, huh? or their blood, excuse me, will not be on your hands. Because of his blood, you're free from what you may have done to them. Likewise, they are free from what they have done to you if you receive his blood for the power and the cleansing it did for you. That, doesn't, that, doesn't, that has nothing to do with the size of the offense. It could have been heinous, huge, whatever, or it could be an itty bitty. Once it's under the blood, you just need to let it go and live life according to the plan he has for you. Again, you know, I like this, I like this word to, to, to deny himself. Uh, I, I told one of the services, you know, have you ever been in a store somewhere and, and they denied your credit card? Yeah. Huh? I mean, here you are, you know, you're looking real good. You're looking like you belong in the store. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there's a line of people there and the lady kind of leans over and says, your card was denied. <laughs> well, I, t I told him, babe, I turned those, turn those over to you because I, I, I'm not sure that I would talk properly with the people on the other end. But PK's got a way. She knows what happens. Uh, sometimes, really, if you're going to go somewhere and, uh, uh, and you're going you're gonna to spend money, and we never spend a lot of money, but I mean, uh, you go somewhere and you're, you're, you're out of town, and it's always better to let them know, you yeah, know, okay. if you're, you know, just call the credit card company and say, listen, we're going to Dallas or we're going to Eunice or whatever, and uh, <laughs> we're going to be spending a lot of money down in Eunice uh, this afternoon, and so you'll be sure if you see a credit card in that deal, you'll let it go on through. But you know, that's pretty, huh? you get denied. Or, or how about, how about you go in to buy your new car and they sit there, and, well, you, uh, you know, your credit's really, really bad. Mm, how bad is it? <laughs> uh, we can't give you any. Mm. Right. Mm. Now they've got, they can handle that today. Yeah. I mean, there are places where you can, you can get you a ride. And listen, I mean, the, 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 the interest is exorbitant, obviously. It's crazy high. But if you want to restore your credit, that's a good thing. You just, you just have to pay the price. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it costs you more than it should, but they're taking a risk on you. No pay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah, that wasn't nice. I, didn't, I hope that wasn't true about any of you, but it can happen. You know what I'm saying? You can be, you can put yourself in a position like, you know, I mean, you just feel like you've got to have something and, and you get it. And then all of a sudden, you know, you can't afford it. And then yeah. yeah. all of a sudden they come to get it. And yeah. I mean, that sucks. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Huh? But you can reverse that curse. Yes, that's right. God will help you reverse that curse. Because, you know, if, if you'll just acknowledge him after you've made a mistake, yeah. he'll say, we can fix this. Yes. Just relax. It's going to take a little bit of time. He's not going to rain money out of heaven to the finance company for you. Yeah. But you begin to do things properly, and he'll get your life back in order, glory to God. And that'll be something you never have to look back on again. I mean, you could say, I, I remember when I was stupid. Amen. Huh? Well, I mean, sometimes you got to call a spade a spade, spade. Huh? 
Huh? You got to say it like, I mean, if you won't tell yourself, I mean, wouldn't you rather tell yourself and have somebody else tell you? Yeah. Yeah. Stand in front of the mirror and say, God and I can, we can fix that. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. And he'll, and he'll help you fix it. And, and what's, what's beautiful about your relationship with him, he'll make it so you don't beat yourself up the rest of your life. If you don't look back, you cannot look back. Denial is refusing to allow any part of your past to interfere with his promises, provision, or plan for your every today. See, denial is not just you restricting yourself from things. Denial is not allowing anything in your life to restrict you from everything he's done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, you, you, you stay in a state of, of righteous indignation where you know what belongs to you, but you're not going to let the enemy keep you bound by those things because God won't. Once you're a child of the king, glory to God. He gives you his word. He tells you to speak his word in faith and he will begin to work with that word to change circumstances and situations that were once restricting you. And I don't care how low you go. Jesus already been lower. And because he's been lower, you get to go higher, praise God. You do not have to be concerned about the past. That's why you should not go back. Right. Don't go back. 2 Corinthians 10.5. Of course, this is the reason that uh, many times we find ourselves in this position. Uh, Paul telling the church at Corinth to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God <laughs> and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This story begins, I believe, in the verse before this, uh, talking about strongholds. And what happens is strongholds begin with thoughts. Yeah, that's right. You think about things. You know, somebody that, uh, somebody that has a, uh, an issue with, uh, uh, with something that, that they put their mind on a lot. I don't want to get off into any specifics. But there's just, there are just things in their life that, are, uh, that create uh, opportunities for perversion, let's say. And so uh, they begin to think about that. And, and when, you, when you think about it, you, you get an image. You, you have an imagination. Uh, the thought, uh, uh, you know, uh, does an HD across your brain, you know, and you're able to see or to uh, uh, imagine yes. in a very clear way what that would be like. And, and then what happens uh, from there, uh, you, uh, you find yourself uh, having a stronghold, something in your life you cannot seem to get rid of. You know, that's why... The lie about addiction is so huge. It is so huge. It is so huge. Because just like you wanted to continue thinking about whatever now has you bound, you can choose to take that thought and cast it down. The moment that thought comes up, no, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't need, I don't need a, a little bit of weed for this pain so I can feel better. I don't, I don't need a little bit of meth because I'm a, I'm a jerk already, or I don't need a little bit of whatever it might be. No, no. When you make a decision, see, it's a decision. Just like you make a decision to step out of darkness into light. Just like you make a decision to receive Jesus so that you can have eternal life. The same thing. All it takes is a decision. A decision by faith. I'm making a decision. I'm not smoking weed anymore. I'm not looking at porn anymore. I'm not going to steal anymore. I'm not going to whatever anymore. You make that decision and you, and you stick with it. You stick with that decision. And you refuse to change. You have to do that. Yeah. See, people that, people that have been down, people that have uh, embraced addictions, people that have, uh, you know, they've abused themselves. They've cut themselves. They've done all kinds of things. They have to make a decision that they're not 
going to let that continue. They're not going to look back. They're not going to say, oh, I'm not worth it. They're, you got to get to a point where you realize I am worth it. I am good stuff. God designed me to be an overcomer. I don't have to stay stuck in that dadgum addicted rut. I don't have to live like mom and them. I don't have to have, have issues like... Uh, teal, uh, you know, I mean, I've got a life I can live but because, of the, because of the plan of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you have to do. And, and, and when that thought comes, you say, not no, but no, I'm not going to go back and do that again. I'm finished with that. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. Hallelujah. I've been given power. Just like Nancy said, I've been given power over all the power of the enemy. Glory to God. Huh? Deception and distractions no longer have their rule in my life because I'm a new creation. Glory to God. And those thoughts come. You say, well, are you, are you kidding me? That's thought right. Right. you get out of my head. You have right. no place in my head. That's right. I cast you down. I pull you down. I will not continue to think on those things. I'm going to think on those things that are lovely. I'm going to think about how cool it is to be delivered. I'm going to think about those things that are pure. I'm going to think of things that are a good report. Glory to God. I'm not going to be able, I'm not going to begin to entertain any kind of negativity because you know what that'll do? That'll take you back. I don't care if it's news, news uh, negativity. I don't care if it's somebody tries to tell you about somebody else. It'll take you back. That's right. That's huh? True. It'll take you back. Right. You might use them as a diversion for a moment, but pretty soon the enemy will take advantage of you beginning to think about things you shouldn't think about. Yeah. What somebody else does right or wrong is none of your business anyway. That's right. That's your right. business is you handling things properly. So when those thoughts come, you got to grab hold of those son of a gun and say, no. No, and, and but whatever, whatever you got to say to yourself. Listen, yeah. God's not going to be embarrassed if you say, say something like yeah. something. <laughs> He's not going to be embarrassed. He's not, he not going to be embarrassed. He loves you. That's right. That's right. I mean, you know, just go in the bathroom, just slap yourself. Yeah, come on. Just look in the mirror and say, Lord, have mercy. Right. I thought you were over this. Yeah. Huh? You need to use your head for something besides a hat rack, boy. Huh? You need to make a decision here. Oh, but you know, I just, uh, don't give me all that wine and stuff. Do you think that wine and stuff's going to get God's attention? Huh? Do you think he comes to our pity parties? He don't show up at pity parties. He's not into pity parties. I'll tell you where he'll show up, where somebody will make a decision. Let's have a decision party. I'll just get around and say, you know, hey, listen, I need to make a decision about this. Will you help me? And will you agree with me? I'm going to make this decision. Then that person you're with, they might say, hey, listen, you know, I, I've, I've got to make a decision too. I need to be accountable to somebody. I need to tell them, you know, I've got to, I've got to go stronger in the right direction. Will you agree with me that I'll get my head out of my bottom and I'll begin to head in the right direction correctly? Let's hold one another accountable. Glory to God. Huh? If you're going to make a decision, make it for him. Huh? That's the only decision that he can help you with anyway. Don't make a decision to don't make a decision to avoid him. Make a decision to stay sold out to the plan that he has for you. So, 1 Corinthians 4 3, Paul again. But Paul said, But with me is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. You know, he didn't care about that. He knew who he was. But you know what he knew bigger than who he was? He knew who Jesus was. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I remember one of the, I don't know what the address in it, but uh, one of the places he, uh, he made this statement, I have wronged no man. <laughs> I mean, he was a church hater, huh? a serial killer. I mean, he was an animal, Paul was. But you know what? After he, after he became a new creation, and you know, he's the, one that, he's the one that pinned that in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That was in 2 Corinthians 5, 5 17. And then in 5, 21, he made the statement. Huh? Glory to God. What a beautiful statement he made. He said, he hath made him. He, God, made him, Jesus, to be sin." He put sin on Jesus. Jesus never sinned. Jesus wouldn't know how to sin. He knew how, but he wouldn't do it. He put sin on him huh? so that you and I could be made Amen. the righteousness of God in him. He put it on him. Paul had that revelation. So he, he had said in one place, he said, I have wronged what, no man. And here in 1 Corinthians 4, 3, he said, I, I, he said, it's no big deal that you judge me. 
you know, there could be people, you know, as you, uh, as you grow in the things of God in your family and, and, and maybe you're going in a little bit different direction. I mean, we'll certainly agree with you that they'll, uh, that they'll come to their senses and get excited about the things of God. Like, like many of you have and are beginning to grow in the things of God. But listen, you know, when, when people don't get it, then, then what they like to do is criticize right, right. and judge. They always want to, they always want to talk about you not being like the way you used to be. Well, thank God. Yeah. Did they remember paying your bail? Huh? Did they remember, you know, um, funding your leech self for all those years? Huh? Did, I mean, did they remember the nights you came in and, and you were bouncing off the walls and if it hadn't been for the walls, you'd been on the floor? Don't they think about that? And now you're doing something radical. You're going to church. Huh? You're not going back to that old life. And now they're ticked off. They're upset. Well, look what's happened to you. You know, you don't come to any of our parties. Well, we all used to get stoned at those parties. What, yeah. what, how's that a party when we don't even remember the party? <laughs> How can you party and not remember the party? It's good. So, man, we had a great time. Did we take pictures of it? <laughs> what kind of party is that that you don't remember? Huh? Or you find yourself, as PK would say, hugging the toilet. Huh? Cold porcelain toilet. What a great night we had. Isn't that beautiful? I'm telling you what, sin's dumb. Sin's dumb. Can you imagine the sin that's dumb is portrayed as fun? Wow. We need help. That's why we need Jesus. Amen. So he said, yeah, he said, I don't even judge my own self. In other words, he was not going to set himself up as a judge in anything in his life except his behavior. That's right. You know, in order for your behavior to change, you have to judge it. That's right. You have to make a decision. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that anymore. And you got to fight it. So true. You got to fight it. Just like I mentioned a little get bit ago, you know, you have to make a decision and you have to fight it because you, you, you may slip up. I said, you may slip up. I'm not giving you a license to slip up, but you don't need one. You'll slip up if you want to. But you may slip up. You may slip up. But I'll tell you what, if you don't quit quitting, one of these days you'll, you'll be done with it. It'll no longer be a factor in your life. I never quit quitting. And thank God, the things that were ridiculous, heinous, fleshly, ungodly, damaging to myself and others, I quit. Now, my girls are blessed. They never knew me then. Amen. Amen. PK was not so blessed. She knew a little bit about me then. But praise God, we blew through that stuff together, didn't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now she didn't have, she just had a few overnight bags, but I had lots of baggage. (laughs) But don't be all proud because you just had a little bit of baggage. Okay. Any baggage is too much baggage. Amen. And she's not, but you have to make a decision. We're still making decisions. We're still making decisions. The further we go, the further we want to go. Right. Huh? Yeah. The better we see what's available, the more we want to have what's available. Yes. The further we want to go, the more we realize where we've been means nothing anymore. Right. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, uh, my perfect will is not in your past. My perfect will is not in your past. What we have going for us now is from now on. That's right. Now, whatever you brought with you that was any value... You still got to use it from today on. What you learned yesterday, just like I mentioned one of the other services, and I may have mentioned it uh, one of the services previously in the last couple of weeks. Babe Ruth made a statement once. He said, you never win today's games with yesterday's home runs. It's what you do today. You put it to work today. 
and you don't get tired of doing it day after day after day, just like you didn't get tired of doing a joint day after day or calling her day after day or running after him day after day after day. No, you've got to do that same thing in the right direction and forget those things that once had you dominated. Now it's time for you to dominate in life by doing things correctly, hallelujah. To deny oneself is to allow the word to become your identity. You gotta let the word become your identity. I don't care what your, what your rap sheet was before you decided to follow him. It's the sheet you have now that he is working with you with. The sheet that you have now. He's not going to throw up anything in your face from your past. That's right. That's right. That, would be, that, would be a, that would be a slap in the face of the Lord Jesus who paid for your sin to be removed as far as the east is from the west. What he works with you now is the word that you want to work in your life. It's the only thing he cares about. He watches over. He hastens his word to perform it. You begin to see what he says about you. You begin to say what, what he says about you. And what you say about you that he says about you is going to be so strong in you that that will outweigh any of the things that you were in your first life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the more you talk about who you are now, the more confidence he can give you about who you are now. And the more confidence you have about who you are now, the easier it is for you to be who you are now. And the easier it becomes for you to be who you're supposed to be, the further you'll go, the greater influence you have. And really, that's when the life that Jesus spoke of that belongs to you will be yours. Huh? He said, my yoke is easy. Life is easy when he's carrying you. But you've got to get up on his shoulders and say, we're in this together. And honestly, you could just whisper in his and say, and you're really the strong part of this relationship. And I'm counting on you. I'm going to stay humble. And I'm going to stay willing to walk away from the things that might keep me from being what I'm supposed to be. Another story here, very good, you know, about not looking back uh, in, in Genesis. Uh, remember Abraham? Abraham took Lot, and they both took all of their livestock and all of their, uh, all of their servants, and they were going to a land that God said he would show Abraham, and they found that wherever it was. And they split up, and, and then all of a sudden, uh, because there's such a blessing on Abraham's life, and yours as well, uh, because there was such a blessing on Abraham's life, their, their livestock, everything multiplied. Everything Abraham did multiplied, which included Lot who went with him, who I'm not sure was supposed to go with him anyway, since he was supposed to leave his family. But that's another story. So anyway, they got so big that, uh, that Lot's people, Lot's servants, and, and Abraham's servants began to get in strife and to argue. And Abraham was a lover. He was a lover. He was a forgiver. He was a God follower now. He'd come to his senses, you know. He was just uh, endeavoring to do what God told him. And, uh, and he said, look, Lot, listen, there's plenty of territory. Listen, uh, if you want to go that way, I'll go that way. Or if you want me to go that way, you can go that way. Just whatever you want to do. Let's just, sp- let's just split up so we'll have plenty of room and, and our people won't be in strife and all that stuff. And we can continue to be blessed. And so uh, Lot, the Bible says, uh, Lot found him a nice, nice spot and and he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah, that was a really not a healthy metroplex area, okay? Right. I mean, it was not, it was one of the original metroplexes that uh, really we've got many like today, yeah. but, but it was really mega nasty. Yeah mega nasty, mega worldly. And so I don't want to parallel with any of them today because I I would run out of names of them. So anyway, he pitched his tent and before long, he's got a condo in Sodom. He bought a condo in Sodom, left his guys out there somewhere in the country to take care of the, uh, take care of the cattle and livestock. And he and his wife and his two girls moved into Sodom. Now, his two girls, they, they, found, them, uh, they found them some uh, uh, fiancés, and so they were, they were uh, scheduled, they were betrothed. Uh, I didn't say they were sleeping with them, they were betrothed to them. Right. Back in those days, back in those days, that was not kosher. Right. Right. And it's still not kosher, but anyway, 
we're not into kosher as much as they were. And so anyway, they had these, they had these, <laughs> so anyway, anyway, God was, God was done with Sodom and Gomorrah. Huh? It was, it was wicked. It's a wicked place. And if God says it's wicked, pfft, don't argue. It's wicked. And so he came to Abraham and he, first of all, he was talking to himself. You know, God talks to himself some. And that's a good thing probably that he talks, talks to himself and, and reminds himself of what his word says so he doesn't say something to people that would hurt him. So anyway, he, uh, he was talking to himself and he said, well, how can I destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if I don't, if I don't tell a man about him, my man Abraham, you know? And, uh, and so he, uh, he went to Abraham and he told him he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said, dang, God. He said, well, you know, if we can find 50 righteous people there, can, will you spare it? God said, yeah. If we can find 50 people, I'll spare it. And, uh, and Abraham said, well, uh, what, uh, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to trouble you, God, but what, if we can find 40, will you still spare Sodom and Gomorrah? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, if we can find 40. He said, now listen, Father, I'm not trying to aggravate you, but, but what about if we find 30? God said, okay, if you find 30, we'll, we'll spare the city. Uh, he said, listen, this is the last time I'm going to trouble you. If we can find 10, will you spare the city? He said, yeah, if you can find 10 righteous, I'll spare the city. Long story short, God sent uh, uh, two messengers to, to see Lot, visit him at his condo. And uh, I don't know, it may have been a regular apartment, but I think it was a condo. I think it was a split level deal. But anyway, he, uh, I mean, he's following God. You know, he's got the cash for a nice place. I mean, this is no, this is no closet deal. This is a pretty sweet place. And so he sends these, uh, he sends these messengers. Uh, a couple of, I mean, you know, when God sends messengers, Huh? I mean, these guys, they don't carry cardboard. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not making fun of people that carry cardboard. I'm so grateful I never had to do that. But anyway, they don't carry cardboard. I mean, they, they have a presence. I mean, these guys show up. These guys are from God. Lot noticed it immediately. He said, you guys, come on in. Come on in, fix some dinner and all that stuff, you know. Or Lot's wife probably did, I guess. They, make, they cooked back then. <laughs> Wives and stuff, they cooked back then. And so, <laughs> that's, that's also my daughter, my oldest daughter, who doesn't cook either, you know. So, anyway. <laughs> but PK does cook really well. I remember. <laughs> so anyway, brought him in to dinner. Sweetheart, I know you got it fixed for me today. We bought a turkey breast at Albertson's yesterday. Huh? Already cooked. I know. I love clean ovens. Perfect. So anyway, anyway, where was I? You know, third service is really cool because if I need to take a little extra, I can. You guys don't mind, do you? I mean, you slept in, you know, it's all good, isn't it? Now, I know some of you have been here for three services, but you know, God blesses those who continue to hear the word of God. So, so anyway, uh, uh, they go inside and then all of a sudden, all the men from the city show up. Now, I think that's lo- using the term loosely, but they were all males and they showed up at the condo and uh, uh, they beat on the door and a lot came to the door. And uh, they said, uh, uh, send out those two guests that came so that we might know them. And Lot said, no, no, these are my guests. They, I'm, not, I'm not sending them out. I'll send out my two virgin daughters. Have your way with them. Huh? 
Sicko, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look up pervert in the Webster's and, and, and Lot's name is right there. Whatever his last name is, but just Lot. And they said no. They tried to bust the door down. But as they tried to bust the door down, the messengers just did it. And every one of them ended up blind. And then they told Lot, they grabbed him by the arm, his wife by the arm. Lot had tried to get the, son, the future son-in-laws to buy into the trip and what was going on. They made fun of them. That's what's happening today in the world. People are making fun of the only escape that's available for people. And that's belief and trust in the Lord Jesus. And so he, the, the men grabbed him by the arm and they began to run out of, out of Sodom, getting as much space before uh, judgment had, had fallen on it. And this is not still going on today, by the way. We're living in a period of time now called, called the dispensation of grace. Everything's been taken care of. God's desire is all be saved. He didn't author Katrina. He didn't author 9-11. He didn't author Columbine. He didn't author any of the rest of these heinous, murderous things. But as they ran out of town, he had already told them. Let me read this very quickly to you in the message. Um, what time is it? Oh, gosh, we got, uh, we got 180 seconds. Uh, <laughs> uh, Genesis 19, 16, and 17. Lot was dragging his feet. This is the message. It's powerful in the message. Lot was dragging his feet. The men grabbed Lot's arm and the arms of his wife and daughters. God was so merciful to them and dragged them to safety outside the city limit. When they had, then, then, uh, when, when they had them outside, Lot was told, now run for your life. Don't look back. The message was perfect for this message. Don't look back. Don't, don't stop anywhere on the plain. Run for the hills or you'll be swept away. Lot's wife, verse 26 says, Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Now, there are all kinds of ideas about that that I don't care about. There are all kinds of reasons and all kinds of uh, whatever, you know, analogies and possibilities and all that. So I don't care. The fact is, when the master tells you to do something, that's what you do. That's right. hmm? In this instance, don't look back. Yeah. All of the other instances we saw from the Lord Jesus, don't look back. Amen. Last place, Philippians 3. Yes, amen. Philippians 3. And what we're going to do for time, you can read it on your own. Many of you have read it in, uh, uh, in the King James. I'm going to read it to you anyway, since we got all those seconds. Paul said, brethren, I, I, count myself to, I, I count not myself to have apprehended or arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see, the master is al always in front of you. He's always in front of you. He desires to lead you and to guide you by his spirit into all truth. He's never behind you. He's always in front of you. He's not going to pull you. He's not going to push you. But he's going to be right there. He's going to be right there. And when's he always right there? When right there is. When right now is. Hmm? Now he'll be there in the future. But you will not be able to take advantage of him until you're right there with him. The street version, the street version, I said it this way. Brothers and sisters, I sure haven't arrived, but one thing I continue to do is forget the past and look forward to what lies ahead, pressing toward the one I am to be conformed to. Hallelujah. You know, just like uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Brother Keith that made that statement. Uh, Ephesians 5.1 tells us, be ye therefore followers of God 
as dear children. You see, that's what we do. We take on, we take on that childlike faith and that willingness to allow him to lead us and no longer be bound by our past. Now, you've got to make a serious decision to do this. Now, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that it's harder for you because the things you did were hard, but it just means that whatever it is, you must make a decision to leave it back there and not turn back or not go back. You continue to go ahead, which means what? What did we see you need to do? Number one, the thought, the thought to go back needs to be captured right then. That's right. Say No. No, I'm past that, and I'll never return. You have to take that thought right then and say, no, no, I'm forgiven. I'm washed. I'm a new creation. And even when a thought comes right after that that says, you're foolish, that's ridiculous. How can you say that? Then you just say to your thought, here's how I say it. I'm a new creation. I'll not go back to that again. You know, dumb thoughts need to be handled with simplicity. You just tell them, no, I'm a new creation. I'm delivered from that. I've been set free. Take advantage of this opportunity. Let's just take a couple of moments before we close. Right on the back of this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't write down several things unless your faith's real big this morning. If it's big, put as many as you want to. But if it's not, if there's one thing that constantly hounds you, if there's one thing that always seems to want to dominate your thinking. Yeah. It just seems like when you're trying to move forward, this thought shows up and its desire is to shut you down or to get you to turn around and go back. Write it down on the back of this. And as you leave today, we're going to burn it and it's going to be gone. And the only thing it will need from you from now on is to remind it that it was burned yes. and gone on the 28th of April, 2019. That's all you need to do. Just burn it. Say, no, I did that at 700 North Del Paso. You're a dumb thought to try and come back. I have put you in the past and that means you're gone at last. Just take a moment.